what is good everybody and welcome back so we are in the euros the quarterfinals not the semifinals not the first round we made it past the first round we're in the quarterfinals and because of that there are some very good teams left a lot of teams that maybe weren't the best of the best have gotten knocked out some really good teams have gotten knocked out italy is no longer here i always said italy was more of a defensive team anyways but they're still a really good team. They're not here. But a team like Switzerland is here. I don't know if you guys saw the Austria game, but the Austria game was incredible. It was incredible. Back and forth, back and forth. The game, you know, in the round right before this one, it was the first round of the uh, knockout stage. The Austria game was insane. So there have been some good teams that got knocked out. Some teams that you thought would got knocked. Well, some teams that you thought would get knocked out have gotten knocked out. And then there are teams that are still here that we expected to be here and that we expect to win the whole thing. So I'm going to go and break down the quarterfinals game by game. And I'm going to go and talk about one team in the roster. Then I'll go and talk about the next team in the roster. Make it quick, make it short, but definitely get into the weeds of the players and who I think has been playing well and things of that nature. So sit back, relax, smash that thumb. Smash that thumbs up button, subscribe to the channel, and also comment down below and let me know what you think about the Euros so far. What do you think about the Euros? Also, I'm in America, obviously. Well, I don't know if that's obvious, but I'm in America. USA is out of the Copa America. Didn't even make it out the group stage. Comment down below and let me know about that as well. Should the coach get fired? I say yes. I also think that it's time for the U.S. to go and build some, like, academy systems in America. I mean, they have it. I played in the very early, one of the first academy systems, you know, brought up in America uh, when I was playing back in the day. But they need, like, real, just European-style academy systems um, for the youth, man. That's what I'm, I'm getting into it too much. This is going to take me all day. But anyways, let's jump into this. And we will go and tackle the first game that we will be able to see on friday so today's thursday so tomorrow tomorrow you will be able to see spain versus germany this game is crazy and it's crazy that they're gonna play already we're gonna jump into the spain uh their lineup their team then go over to germany and i will pick out of these two who i think will win so we're not gonna play the game um what i will do is go to team manager okay so here we go now this is the spain starting lineup and this is up to date. Like I have the live performances on. So you guys will be able to see, you know, who's been playing up and down. You see the red arrows are down and then green arrows are up. I might actually just sim the game as well to see who they think, who FIFA thinks would win. But Nico Williams, I believe, has been the star player for this team. He is so good. 21 years old, 82 overall in FIFA. I believe he should at least be like an 84. But he is amazing. Skill moves crazy. Speed crazy. He is a very direct dribbler as well, which I like because nowadays in uh, in the world of football, you don't really see a lot of direct dribblers. A lot of people are getting the ball. They're hitting you like the little stutter step, and then they pass the ball back. He's skillful. He's fast. And he is very confident on the ball. He is going to be a reason. If Spain beat Germany... He'll be one of the reasons why they do that. Morata's up top. I always had a thing about Morata and, like, he isn't the best. I mean, he, he's a good player, obviously. We know that. He's a captain of Spain. But I always thought that he's been bouncing around throughout all the big clubs in the world and never really had a great season. Uh, maybe here and there. But he's, like, been having, you know, average seasons. I still think he's a good forward. And he is one that Spain needs because if the ball's in the box and you need to toe poke it in, he will do that. So, I'm um, going to have him up top. Yamal. This kid at 16 years old is incredible. I mean, he would be incredible if he was 30 years old. He's a good player, period. The dude is literally 15 years younger than I am. 15 years younger than your boy. I'm an old head, bro. I'm unk, bro. Oh, no. I'm unk. Oh, no. This is not good. I'm coming to the realization... I'm old. It's like, nah, I'm not old, man. I'm still young. Young and thriving and beaming and booming. Don't know what that means. But okay, anyway. So, uh, he's he's a, he's a stud. He's a baller. He's going to be pivotal as well. And he's going to be just crucial. He's going to have a great career. Very excited to be able to watch him throughout, uh, you know, his career. He's at the very beginning right now. 
We know how good Pedri is. We know how good Rodri is. I mean, this man will score any cutback goal. What I mean by that is if a winger's going down the, the flank and they just cut it back, don't cross it in the air, cut it back on the ground, Rodri is going to hit that one time. It's going to go to the left or right. Not upper 90, lower, like right in the side panels. This man is deadly. He's dangerous. And I believe he's the best CDM in the world. And then Ruiz. I think this guy right here has been having a tremendous tremendous um tournament so good honestly way better than i thought he would i was like yo why is he starting when i saw the first game of this of the um tournament i was like yo all the most should start i mean who else do they got him they got shoot they have players torres why not put him attacking midfielder why not put zuba mendy might not put him there. He's younger as well. But Rue, Ruiz, not Ruiz, Ruiz has been a beast. He's been very, very good. Cucurella has been good as well. He's starting over Grimaldo, which is insane. Because Grimaldo, obviously, we know can do a little bit of everything. Actually, he can do a lot of everything. Look at his stats, bro. Even his tackling, they put plus 10, so it's 95 and 93. That's crazy. But in real life, and yeah, my phone is getting a text message. In real life, he's a great player. Very, very good player. Marino as well. I mean, this dude has not one yellow besides volleys. Okay, I might have to look into it maybe in career mode. Uh, I play a lot of career mode. Anyways, um, yeah, this team, good. Goalie, great. Spain looks pretty good. Now, let's go and check out Germany real quick. So, here is the Germany lineup. And you guys are seeing I'm wearing an Arsenal jersey, which means I'm an Arsenal fan. Which doesn't mean this, but I am going to say that I do support England. We'll get to them, and I have... I have a lot to say, but also so little to say because of their performances. I'm not going to talk too much about them. But we are going to focus on Germany. Kai Harris is an Arsenal player. Very good player. He's up top for them. And I never realized that he is 6'4". I always thought he was like 6'1", 6'4". Gundogan, Wirtz, Musiala. These two players have been incredible. One more time. Incredible. Especially Musiala. He's been great. Kroos, Andrich, Rudiger, Kimmich, Ty. Or Ta and Ram has been actually playing at the left back position. So, this has been the formation and the positioning and the players that have been playing um, for Germany. And I think they are solid. I didn't think they were going to be as good as they are. Manuel Neuer in goal, he's been here forever. He's 38. He's been so good that Ter Stegen, who's a beast, can't even get into the team. That's how good Manuel Neuer has been. Um, but the defense these two center backs right here are studs and that's why for instance uh Bayern Munich is trying to get tie or ta is it ta I believe so but Bayern Munich is trying to get him Tony Cruz is retiring Gundogan is at Barca now but he was at City these two studs who knows what's about to happen with them I mean Wurtz is on Leverkusen who's who had an incredible season but is he really gonna stay there Musiala's on Bayern, which is one of the best teams in the world, but is he really going to stay there? And then Kai Havertz. I mean, these four right here are just too dangerous. These guys hold the middle, all four of these guys. And then the wingers. Kimmich playing right back is crazy because he can literally play any position when it comes to right back, center midfielder. At the six or the eight, Kimmich can play. As you're seeing, right back, center mid, CDM. And then Ram is just solid. I would actually play Schlutterbeck. Schlotterbeck right here and just tell him to sit which allows him to play center back Ty to, Ty to play center back Rudiger to play center back push Kimmich up a little bit attacking so, so that's like a 3-3-3-1 three, 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 that wouldn't be too bad but that's not what they're doing so Germany Spain Germany's gonna be at home no matter what because I mean think about it they're in Germany playing so there isn't a way that I can sim it. But I will sit here and let you know who I think is going to win. And I do think Germany is going to win this game. They are backed by the crowd. They are on home soil. Literally home soil because they're playing in Germany. And this German team is honestly a little, uh, I would say, more experienced than Spain. Spain has great wingers. They're both really young. They have good midfielders as well. But they have Pedri, who's also young. Yes, Pedri has been playing a lot and has been playing for a while at a big club. But he's still young. 
the defense I don't believe is as good as Germany's. So I do think Germany will win, and I'm going to say they're going to win. Two to one. Germany will win two to one. So next up, we have Portugal and France, which is going to be my favorite matchup to watch um, in this tournament. Now, this is Cristiano Ronaldo's last uh, Euros, as he just announced, which is insane because he is obviously a legend. Some call him the GOAT. I mean, of my generation, I would say that he, well, Ronaldinho, definitely. But Cristiano Ronaldo, like, you know, stats-wise and everything he's done. Him and Messi are the two GOATs that everyone says. And... I was saying Ronaldo for the longest until Messi did win that World Cup. And then I'll say, okay, Messi, you know, he, he's the GOAT because of that. But I still think Ronaldo is the GOAT over Messi just because of the way Ronaldo, you know, played and the things that he done. He, he's done an incredible amount. But him or Messi, they're the two GOATs. Anyways, Portugal, France. Let's go and look at the Portuguese lineup and see why they're so good. We have Ronaldo up top who is an 84 overall. He has lost a lot of speed and a lot of strength over the years. I mean, the dude is 39 years old now, so it makes a lot of sense. Old Ronaldo was basically a 94 overall. New Ronaldo, or vice versa, old Ronaldo now is an 84 overall. But he's still doing his thing. And um, if he can keep his head in the game, don't get too emotional. And help his team out by cheering them on, cheering the crowd on. When he gets the ball, hit them rockets. I mean, he still has. Let's see what his long shot is. They're plusing it by 6 to an 89. Finishing is a 93. It's still Ronaldo, man. I'm never going to count him out. So, they have him. Rafael Leal has not had a great tournament. And I'm just going to be honest with you. They're plusing his speed and acceleration by 5. Which now makes it a 99. Dribbling 98. Ball control, 94. Okay. But he has not had the best tournament. And I had this guy as one of the main players to watch in the tournament. Um, I'm not sure if he's a little bit nervous or, it's, you know, the stage is... It's a big stage, but he's a big player. I don't know, but um, it's time for him to step up. Bernardo Silva is one of the best players in the world. This man is pure class. He gets the ball on his feet, and it's hard to take it away from him. He is so good. Bruno Fernandez also is a very good player, very good playmaker. 99 uh, vision at that plus five at the 94. They know how good he is. He's outstanding. He's a leader. He's a veteran. Polina in the middle just ex actually accepted a move to Bayern. They're stacking up. Strength, stamina, aggression. They have his aggression at 99 with the plus four. Tackling, look at that 97 and 90. Uh, eight with the plus tens. Him in the middle with Fernandez and then Vitinha has been playing outstanding as well. The PSG man, he's a good player, very good player. He's been playing strong, playmaking for the team, and he's been running a lot. Now, Ruben Diaz is one of the best center backs in the world. We know that Cancelo has been incredible, he has always been incredible. This is the one player that I would say. is a wing back that basically is also a right mid which basically also is a center mid which basically also is a 10 which basically also was a winger he can play any position on the field this guy is so good and fifa only has his strength at a 62 and then his finishing at a 69 and free kick at a 69 and then volleys at 62 so basically they have him at 70 and above everything for the most part pepe at 41 has been a stud but he is old he almost got caught if you guys uh remember when portugal played their last game uh there was a chance that he actually pepe gave up and then costa had to make a outstanding you know stretched leg save and this was at the end of the game so portugal could have lost that game because of pepe he's still a good player he's very smart strong but we do know how slow he is um, so that is going to be something that we have to watch out. I mean, FIFA has him at tremendous speed. I don't know about all that, but he's still a good player. And then Mendez, very fast, very strong. Look at that, all greens. Very fast, very strong, very fit, very athletic, a very good player. I wish Arsenal had him. He would be perfect at Arsenal. Um, but yes, that is the Portugal team. And let's go look at France. So we have masked 
so we have Mbappe with the mask right here he doesn't have it. but in the gameplay he has a mask we all know he broke his nose in that I think it was the first or second game uh, but it's Mbappe the dude is a beast the dude's a legend the dude is a stud already one of the greatest the game has ever seen already and by the time he finishes his career he will go down as one of the legends one of the goats um Mbappe Dembele Griezmann Kante who has had a revelation in this Euro 2024 tournament I mean he hasn't played international football for I believe two years he came back and he just continues to ball out run everywhere be a stud the stamina at 82 is incorrect it should be like 99 the dude is out standing and honestly he's one of my favorite players to watch a guy that is not going to complain about anything he'll do the dirty work if you give him the ball he'll also move forward he can dribble a little bit he can shoot not the best technique when it comes to shooting but uh, N'Golo Conte is one of the best center midfielders in the world and at one point people were saying he was the best in the world Tushimani has been starting or Tushimani has been starting um Rabio has been in there as well but this midfield three is crazy. I'm a big fan of Tushimani as well. I mean, 24 years old, playing for Real Madrid. Come on now. Come on now. Barcola, Coleman, Taram, Kolo uh, Muani. Whoever is playing on that left-hand side or that striker side along with Dembele and Mbappe, or just a combination of Mbappe and any of these wingers, is insane. Hernandez has been great. In the last game they played... Um, he had an outstanding tackle that actually was like a game-saving tackle in the box. The speed is incredible. We've always known this. Greens everywhere. This guy is a very, very good player. And his brother plays on Spain. I think they were like Spanish-born or something. And then he came over to... I forgot the story, but France is very lucky to have him. Saliba. Baby goat, bro. Baby goat center back right here. 23 years old. This guy is going to be one of the best center backs we have seen in a very, very long time. Because he already is. So, in eight years from now, he will only be 31. And he's a center back. He can play for even more years than that. He is going to, man, I'm so happy Arsenal have him. Umpo Makano and Kunde. This guy at right back is incredible. Now, he was originally a center back. But he's been playing right back. And I think this is this is his natural position now. It's just like Ben White for Arsenal played center back, played right back. More of a defensive um, right back, but that's fine. He's more defensive. Umpacano, Saliba, they all play in the back. Let Hernandez go up and play make and try to score and cross and all those things. On the bench, they're even stacked. No Paul Pogba. This man's been in the stands watching the game because he's suspended. But this French team... Has not even scored a goal in all open play. I think it was two own goals and a PK by Mbappe that has brought them to the point they are at now. We're going to look right here. Portugal and France. Who do I think will win? I'm going to keep it a buck. I'm going to keep it a bean. France going through, bro. I can't doubt this team. I can't. They're winning games without even scoring in open play. Imagine when they start clicking. Hopefully it's now. Because they need to. But if they start clicking, it's a wrap. Portugal is losing to France. France is going through. I'm going to make this one short. And focus on Turkey. Turkey had an outstanding game. Versus, uh, I believe. Wait, hold it. Turkey played in the round of 16. Yeah, Austria. That game. If you didn't see the highlights, watch that. But. I want you to go and watch the full game. A lot of people watch the highlights. Go ahead and do that. But I want you to go back and watch the full game. That's what I do. If I miss a game, I'm watching the full game. And then I'll go and watch the highlights after. But I need to see what happened. That was the best game of the tournament, hands down. It was exciting. End to end. No midfielders, bro. It was forward and defense. Defense and forwards. Insane in the rain. I mean, it was great. England. We'll get to them in a second. Let's go look at Turkey's lineup. And some of their players. I'm going to pronounce all these guys' names wrong, so forgive me. Forgive me. This guy's actually a baller. Yil Yilmaz, is that his name? Not sure. Guler, 
this kid is now he's outstanding he's 19 years old playing for um real madrid he is outstanding they have him here at the right like wing right mid position um i believe he should be playing more like here we should put this guy i think he's at fairnoid now he was at ix before psv before but he's at fairnoid now a great player i mean he's you see that in fifa they gave him basically all greens just the slide tackles at 69 defensive awareness is at a 71 um baller we know that the inter milan midfielder i like him more as like an attacking midfielder to be honest get him up the field a bit look at that 98 they gave him the plus eight with the 90 vision but he can stand in there and make a tackle or two um so kind of put him at like the eight the seven the ten anywhere in there i think would be outstanding for him um tosun up top we got a forward we got a left mid i mean there's a lot of good players on this team and a lot of players the names that i cannot pronounce so forgive me this is the manchester united man right here i believe he's still at manchester united uh the goalkeeper who's in goal for them this guy i feel like i've seen him somewhere too who does he play for comment down below who does he play for club wise but this turkey team is a good team and we know that they will not stop fighting until the very end now i actually i have england here this is incorrect i gotta go and look at netherlands real quick so let's go and look at the netherlands roster um and then we'll get to england later so here we go looking at the netherlands they were the third so they came third in their group and they still made it through i don't think they should be here i mean explain to me how that is fair or how that makes sense the third team no the top two teams make it through now obviously they're a good team but they didn't step up so you don't step up you don't get rewarded you shouldn't get rewarded for coming third it's not bronze medal it's a winner and a silver winner you know first and second place anyways they're here and that sucks for a lot of these teams because this is a good team. Memphis Depay, we all know, is a baller, bro. He can do about just about everything. He has 67 heading, um, which is like the yellow. The only one. Everything else, defensive stats, obviously going to be red because he's not a defensive player. This man stays up top and waits for the ball to come to him. But he can play, and he can play very, very well. This kid right here, Simons, very, very good player. Arsenal, get them ASAP. Loan them, especially because for some reason PSG, they're just loaning him to the entire world. They're like, all right, you can go to this team, you can go to this team, you can go to this team, but they're not like trying to keep them and play them. Then sell them. But if you don't want to do that, Arsenal, go and get them on the loan, and we can use him for sure in this upcoming season. Fring, uh, Fring Pong, fast, 99, 99 acceleration and pace defensively he's a great player as well he can play right back but he's been playing right mid um for this netherlands team in the euros the midfielders that are holding have been solid uh yeah these are the two center backs that have been playing virgil van dyke as we know one of the best center backs in the world at least especially before his acl injury he was the best in the world i i'm saying in my opinion i think he was the best in the world uh when he was playing for liverpool and they were winning all those you know trophies he was a stud ake plays for man city and he's just a solid all-around player not too fast not too strong not too technical you know not too anything but he is just very very solid definitely a player that you want to have because he makes very few mistakes then we have the center back who plays for inter milan i believe he's at is he at inter milan or is he at somewhere else maybe he was at milan but um we have the center back as well and then we have the lit on the bench i don't think he's did he play last game i don't think so malin scored two so he actually might end up starting to be honest he scored two last game um, he might get the start. Honestly, I might start him. Just because he got two last game, he's on a high. Keep him going. Dumfries playing right back. Had an outstanding game. 
one of the best games the right back has played in this tournament in the last group stage game the last knockout game and i guarantee he's gonna probably play well again he's a 6'2 176 pound right back who can go forward because he's very fit he's very strong he's very fast he can cross the ball he can play a little you know what I'm saying tiki taka knock the ball around um he's a good very good player and then i want to focus on another liverpool man cody gakpo this guy right here has been having a great tournament he always plays very well for uh, netherlands for liverpool i feel like he needs more time meaning time on the pitch they're not really giving him pt like that so he can't get in form but he has been playing very very well and i do think he needs to get more time for liverpool but he's, if he starts again which i'm sure he will he will for a fact he might cook again so turkey netherlands netherlands or no turkey you can't be upset if you do lose this game because you guys have fought very very hard the up-and-coming turkey players a lot of young guys as well have been looking very good and i'm excited to see what they're going to do in the future but i do have netherlands making it through to the next round now for the last matchup england switzerland this is going to be interesting switzerland has been playing very 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 well england has been playing very 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 two hours later very very bad let's take a look at their roster y'all are seeing right here this i'm taking out trent because he uh he started the first game but he hasn't been starting much and then Palmer is up here as well. Eze is also like somewhere around here because he's been getting PT. Um, but this is what they lined up with, I believe, the last game. Like this exact formation. I think there's something wrong. I don't know what's going on. Look at Just look at the team. Look at the front three. You can say three of those players are arguably some of the best. Well, they are some of the best forwards in the entire world there's seven billion people on this planet and these three players kane Saka, foden are some of the best in the out of seven billion they're probably in the top 10 out of seven billion of best attackers in the world just think about that i'm gonna sit back think about that Did you think about it that's insane insane and they're doing nothing kobe Mainu is young we know that but they're putting him in there declan rice another arsenal man is a beast he's a stud jude bellingham has been saving the team as we would assume the center back pairing has been all right kyle walker is just solid trippier i don't know why he's still playing left back If I had to reset up this team, I would do this, to be honest with y'all. Um, I would do this. Well, I don't know if... Can you play left back? Like, I don't know. But he needs to be on the field. Or maybe even this. What do y'all think about this? I mean, he'd play a bit higher. So he'd play, he'd play like this. And then I'll have a Foden play a bit more like midfield-ish. So a bit more of like the 8. But he also is like the 10. And then Jude, just run around and just do random stuff. Whatever you do, just do it. Who knows what he'd really be doing. He'd just be standing there scoring bicycle kicks and just be doing random stuff. Kane, score a goal. Yes, you did score the final goal to win in the last game. But do more than a header in the overtime. Shoot from 20. Shoot from 30. Shoot from 18. Shoot from 7. Shoot the ball. And everyone, stop hating on soccer. That is the star boy 
Arsenal boy. And everyone's hating on him, saying he should play left back. He should do this. He should do that. He's been playing okay. He's been playing fine. We just need to connect this team a little bit better. Get the ball off these people's feet. Yes, John Stones can play the ball on his feet. I get that. But get the ball off of his feet. Find Rice. Or step into the midfield a bit. Like, all right, boom. Step into the midfield like this. You're around here. You can play. Boom, boom. Knock the ball to Jude. Knock it to Foden. Find Foden's feet, and then you can play make with these guys up top. Then defensively, you drop back. Boom. Center back. Right there. Play defensive. Defensively, you kind of come like over here. Or oh, that's fine. Yeah, sure. You're doing that already. Then Foden just drop off a bit. Jude, do one of these. You're going up here. So defensively, these two are kind of playing a little bit more flat. Or he's playing the most flat. Stones, you can step up. Okay, you can step up a little bit. You guys pinch in. Defensively. Saka, come back a bit. Palmer, come back a bit. Kane, I need you, like, in here. That's how we're going to defend. Make the balls go wide. And then we just try to lock them down. Now, we got to be careful with Trent. Not the best defender. Saka's going to have to come back around here. Stones, you're going to have to help around here. If the ball does get pushed down the, wide, down the line, Trent, here you go. Stones, you come out here. Rice. Okay, boom. Walker, boom. Defensively, Foden. Drop off. Jude, drop off. You're fit. And then if it's getting out of hand defensively, then we're going to have to bring in Cody, or, uh, Gallagher. Cody Gallagher. Bring in Maynu. <sighs> I'm done talking about him. It's too stressful. Let's go over to Switzerland. So Switzerland, they are having a much better team. Breland Bolo has been a FIFA just stud for years now. He was obviously younger in the earlier FIFAs, and he was like that young guy that was fast and strong up top that you can just send the ball to, and he would just body everybody and score. Vargas has been also playing very, very well for Switzerland. They're lucky to have this guy. Um, he's been playing well. Okafor has been also coming on and playing very well when he has the chance, and I believe he should start, and there should be a top three like this, to be completely honest. Or maybe, yeah, play just like this. That's fine. Um, Xhaka, we know, is a stud. Ex-Arsenal player. Bayern Leverkusen player went there and they won the league, had an undefeated season. The season he got there. That says a lot. That says a lot, a lot. They have Zach. Oh, yeah, I forgot. Zakaria. Okay, not bad. Defensively, they have a Kanji. Uh, Scar. Or Shar. How do you say his name? Let me know down below. But he plays for Newcastle. And then we have Rodriguez, who at one point was also a very good player for FIFA. I mean, left back back in the day. Um, yeah, he was always solid with all the stats. Fast, strong, everything. He can cross. Um, Shakiri, this man and Jack Peters have the biggest calves in the world. They have to be studied because it makes no sense. But he has a five-star skill move. Left-footed, we know that. And he has a four-star weak foot. I believe he's playing for Chicago Fire now. Is that the case? But he had been having a uh, very good career. You guys are seeing he's very technical as well. And it always has that shot power. Short guy. 5'7", 158 pounds. Now, two outstanding goalies. Two. And Summer has been playing. When you think about this team and think about them versus England... I'm going to say that England is going to end up winning. How are they going to win? I don't know. Are they going to dominate? To be honest, I don't know. If Could I see them lose? I could. I really could. But I'm going to keep the faith as an EPL fan, an Arsenal fan, an England fan. I'm going to keep faith and say maybe this is the game they turn up and they end up winning um, and continue in this tournament. But I hope you guys enjoyed. If you guys did, smash that thumbs up button. I will do another video for the next round. Um, let's see what happens. Let's see if my picks are correct. Take care. And I am.